and gentlemen, welcome to The Awakening. My name is Regina. I am raw, I'm educated, I'm gorgeous, I'm innovative, I'm nice, and I'm amazing. I am a motivational speaker, certified life coach, podcast talk show host, author, a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, Incorporated. All right, all right, all right. Thank y'all, thank y'all so much, thank y'all so much. Today, we're gonna wring out our sponges. Y'all can have a seat. I want to make sure y'all was up because y'all finished eating that food. <laughs> All right. Welcome to The Awakening, as I say. My name is Regina Smith. I'm a motivational speaker, life coach, podcast, talk show host, and an author, and uh, other things I will tell y'all later. <laughs> All right. I like to get in the audience. Y'all don't mind. Let me get off the stage here. Hold on one second. I like to move around. I like to move around. All right, on a beautiful Saturday evening in September of 2019, I, the amazing Regina, had a mental breakdown. All right, I am recovering from insecurity issues, low self esteem, validation issues, and people pleaser. Is any of those sound familiar? All right, I'm recovering because I'm not claiming it no more. I'm recovering, I'm working on it. But since learning to love myself, doing the work, standing in my truth, putting on my crown like a queen should, I have accomplished these things. Ladies and gentlemen, professional organizer, certified life coach, podcast talk show host, speaker, author, founder of Pam Foundation, nonprofit organization, and I own a vending machine company that's called True Blue Vending LLC. This is not to pat me on the back. This is to tell you when you find your purpose, life opens up for you. We stop ourselves, all right? This is done in less than three years. I've been on this earth for 53, last three. So this could happen to anybody that find a purpose. Who are you? That's a question. Someone want to give me an answer? I know you know. Who are you? <laughs> There you go. Anybody else? It's okay. Because I, when somebody asked me, my life coach asked me that question, I would blink it right at him. There you go. I was blinking. She was blinking at me. I'm blinking at her. But she's blinking at me. I'm like, I'm a mother. I'm a, a, I work at UPS. A, <laughs> she was like, that's titles. That's not who you are. Who are you? She said, well, let's start from the drawing board because obviously we've got to start from scratch. You don't even know who you are. So how are you work, how are you operating in this world? We don't even know who you are. How are you receiving people? How are people receiving you? How are you doing anything if you don't know who you are? That made me really think. I got to my I didn't get this right in 50 years, huh? So we're going to build that foundation. Your purpose is easy and effortlessly. Why? God designed it that way. Purpose is not hard. Purpose is supposed to be easy. It's something that you probably don't even think it is, because it comes so easy for you, you think it's not it. We think that purpose got to be, I want to be an astronaut, or I want to be whatever. No, it could be something that you do, that you get paid or do not get paid for, and you love doing it. It's that simple. That simple. We make purpose to be so complicated, it's not. When you're confident, as our Coach Jay already kind of told you already, you walk in that confidence, you walk in it, right? You, you don't care what people think about you, you don't care what people say about you, you don't give a flying, you know what? Because what? You are confident in who you are. You don't let nobody else tell you who you are. And lastly on this, I, I gotta, I, let me sit down for this one. <sighs> let your light shine before others, Matthew 5 and 16. God told y'all, y'all can let your light shine. Stop letting people tell you, oh, you, you're doing too much. You, 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 you can see it. You, you know, um, God said it was okay. He said, let your light shine before others. <laughs> so if God said it's okay, it's okay. We are, in, in, I'm sorry to say, in the black African American community, we are trained, I'm like a goal in history, to make ourselves less than, Put it, they pin ourselves against us. Colorization, the whole shebang, right? It's in our DNA, y'all. But we got to fight that. 
We are supposed to be confident who we are. If I'm confident who I am, it got nothing to do with you. That's your insecurity. You ain't doing nothing. So you want to tell me, oh, you can see that you're doing all of it. No, I'm being who I am. Be who you are. We all can shine together. It's not a competition. It's us being who we are and what God designed us to be. How are you going to tell me not to shine? Well, I'm going to give you some sunglasses because you're going to have an issue. Because I'm shining. So close your eyes. Here's some sunglasses. I don't know what to tell you, but I'm going to shine without any problems. This is the devil's plan. I had to make sure I said this correctly because this is deep. The devil loves for you to be comfortable and to stay in your comfort zone. Want me to say that again? The devil loves for you to be comfortable and stay in your comfort zone. He does not want you to find your purpose. He makes complacency and dysfunction your normal. So you don't realize that you're just existing and not living. It's like being in a jail cell with a door wide open. The devil don't have to work hard. He works smart into teaching. He makes you lazy. He makes you don't keep your promises. He makes you not consistent. That's all he got to do. His job is done. He don't have to hurt you physically. He don't have to hurt you mentally. He just makes you lazy. And so how you do God purpose if you're at home on the couch Netflix? Netflix. Netflix and all that stuff is cool. Binge watching is cool. We all do it here and there. But when you're at the point that you got to be home on whole 48 hours spinning and watching something, God said, I have something for you to do, but when you're done watching that, you let me know. Okay? That's the devil's plan. Here's some other tactics that the devil uses. Procrastination. I do it tomorrow. Who told you tomorrow's going to come? We're getting too comfortable and complacent that we are thinking we're going to be here tomorrow. Worry. My mother said, how are you worrying about something you don't know what you're worrying about? What is worry? If you're a child of God, how are you worried? We go to church and we read and we amen and everybody and we do all this stuff, but when it's time to apply what we learn, we forget it. What's the sense of learning this stuff when we're not applying it to our lives? It's easy to apply it when it's good, when it's beneficial, but when it's hard, the valleys that you go through, we all of a sudden go, oh, I don't know what to do. You do. He says it right here. It's in the Bible. He told us. But when it's not easy, we we don't want to you know sit there and read it. We want just somebody to tell us. We got to really do our homework on that. Fear, fear is a made up word. There's not. Where's what's fear? Fear is somebody else's insecurities. If you want to do something and somebody tell you you said something similar to that, if someone want to tell you you can't do that, why? That's your problem. Fear is made up. Self doubt. We already touched on that a little bit, so I won't go too deep in self-doubt. Assuming. Not, let me move there. I got to sit down again. <laughs> assuming. We have an issue, and a lot of us in this community have issues on assuming things. You can walk by someone, and they don't smile at you, and you made a whole movie scene on why. You made a whole movie scene on why they don't like you, and by the time you did that, you already told your girl, she don't like me because I looked at her and she looked at me and she didn't even say hi. And then what happens? About a good five conversations down the line, by the time the story gets down to the fifth person, y'all fighting. Because we assume stuff. We got to learn how to just talk to people. If we think a person is upset or we have some issues, say, you know what? Hey, sis, I, I told you the other day and you said you was upset. You okay? And they'll tell you, yeah, girl, I just had a lot on my mind. I didn't, even, I didn't even know. Done with. But you made a whole movie, and you were the star in it. And you put in co-stars, and they had nothing to do with nothing. The girl just had a bad day, and y'all made it all about you. That's your ego. That's your ego. Because you think you're so important, it's all about you. Everything happens to you. Like, oh, they don't like me. You don't like yourself. That's the reason why you don't like nobody like you. And you're telling me that you don't like you. And that's not going to change until you do your work. 
failure. Failure, for the definition of failure, is what? Lack of success or inability to meet expectations. When you try anything, failure's out the window. Failure to me, this is my definition, I just changed it up. Failure is doing absolutely nothing. That's what failure is. When you try anything, you have now succeeded because you actually did something. You may have to tweak, you may have to pivot, you may have to reset, but you did not fail. A person who don't do nothing, they're scared, is the failure because they haven't done anything. They can't tell, oh yeah, you failed. You ain't do nothing. <laughs> so how do I fail when I try? Because that's called the journey. Ladies and gentlemen, the journey doesn't have no straight path. It's ups and downs. God has designed it so you can learn lessons through your journey. And when you learn lessons through your journey, at the end, all of that's going to make sense later. You cannot figure that out one step in front of the other. You're not able to figure out all this in one shot. That's what this world is telling us, and that's why we get confused, and that's why we get upset when things don't happen right then. Oh, it didn't work out my... Yes, it did. Because it was a lesson, and you're missing the lesson. You're not paying attention to the lesson. You're paying attention to what they describe as failure. Change your mindset, ladies. Oprah Winfrey was fired from the job as a newspaper. Imagine this. Okay, imagine this. Oprah was in Chicago. She walked in the office. Her boss sitting behind the desk. Uh, Ms. Winfrey, can you sit down for a second? Um, we don't need your services anymore. We don't think you're a good newscaster. I guarantee you, people have been probably harassing him the rest of his life if he's still alive. You don't fight Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> we got to put it in perspective, right? The people behind these desks that you think are controlling, a lot of people use that as their, their, their life. Because they don't have no control nowhere else. I guarantee you go home, they got no control nowhere else but in that seat. And when they feel intimidated because of your greatness, instead of them trusting the process and trusting the journey, they know that we have enough and plenty for all. I don't have to sabotage you to get better, right? This is what people do. There's no way you could tell me that you didn't see her greatness back then. There's no way. It was, it's all in her. He was intimidated and scared that he was going to lose his job. And he tried to, to, to make her feel that she was less than and tell her, we don't need you no more. And we all know what happened. Because she knew her purpose. She knew that she was born to do this. And she didn't let nobody take her out of that. She continued to move on. And as you see, I guarantee you, I wish I was a fly on the wall when somebody was like, are you kidding me right now? You, man, shoot, you, you need to fire you. <laughs> Michael Jordan was cut from his high school team. Imagine Wilmington, North Carolina, and he's in the, in the, in the uh, room with the coach. Coach like, man, you ain't good enough, man. We, we got to cut you. He said, all right, I ain't good enough for you, but I'm good enough for me. And I'm going to continue to practice. I'm going to continue to do what I got to do. I guarantee he's a laughing stock of Wilmington right now. Guarantee that. And this is the best one. Colonel Sanders. He had $105 of his Social Security check. Did I tell you how old he is? 65 years old. He set out to sell his franchise mall that we all eat. I think everybody here ate KFC before, right? He was rejected 1,009 times. Not 109, not 19. 1,009 times. How many times would you try for something? <laughs> when you know your purpose, ladies and gentlemen, nobody could, just, nobody could get you off your path. He knew this, is, was, this was it. That takes a lot. That's called learning your purpose and knowing it and not letting nobody change your purpose because they're insecure about you. You know that that industry is a, is a really competitive industry. He probably went on, oh, no, 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 they ain't good. Because they knew he had something. But when, when that person who did it realized that what's for you is for you and what's for me is for me, he allowed him to go ahead and do it. Because he wasn't, first of all, jealous, envious, or any of that, right? So do not let nobody tell you when you have that person, when God gave it to you, you're going to know it. It's going to be in you. You're going to know it. Don't let nobody discourage you. All right, I'm going to give you some lessons before I head out today. Proverbs 
24 and 23. Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life, ladies and gentlemen. It runs your life. Everything you say manifests out to something later on. Not some of the things, not one or two of the things. Every thought that goes to your mind, we think about 20,000 thoughts a day. Every thought that goes to your mind is going to change your life. That's how serious it is. When you think bad about people, when you talk about people, when you're envious and jealous of people, it manifests to something later. It doesn't go away. It don't get tucked under the rug. It's going to come when you least expect it. Oh, why didn't I get that job? Or oh, why didn't I get that? Or oh, why didn't that work out? Let's think back. Let's think back. Is there something you said or did in here that manifested that out? It's not happening to you, it's happening for you. Everything that's happening is happening for your better good. Everything. The doctor's reports the, are being fired. Everything has a purpose and reason in life. Everything. Not because if you don't like it, you think it doesn't. Yes, everything is a lesson. Everything, good or bad. So it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. Start trying to find a lesson in stuff and stop trying to be mad at people and upset because things don't go your way. Th stop and think. What am I supposed to learn from this situation? Something's supposed to be happening right now. I need to learn, so let me just be quiet. Girl, I know it's hard because I want to clap back so fast sometimes with people. Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what I feel. Because that's the instant, because that's our egos. That's our egos because we suck. We, we got issues. Because if we love ourselves, we don't care what nobody say. But we have that problem that we don't care about ourselves enough to let, know to let it go. Stand in your truth, like I said earlier. Everybody in here has something. Every single person in here has something. Now, we have different things. It doesn't make you better than the other person, though. We're quick to talk about somebody else. Girl, let me tell you, she, she with that man, girl, that couldn't be me. Yeah, that couldn't be you, but you at work and letting the boss take advantage of you, though. But she's not. It doesn't make you better or make her better. You just got different things. And when you start thinking about it like that, you understand we all in the same playing field. Ain't not, nobody better than nobody else. When you start thinking that way, you'll see people differently. But your ego got to come out. Your ego's going to always make you feel, I got to feel better than her because I feel better about myself. So I need to find someone less than me so I can feel better about me. That means you have a problem. Because you should be supposed to be praying and wishing the best for even your enemy. And that's hard. It takes practice. Don't get me wrong, y'all. It takes a lot of practice. But the reward is so worth it. I promise you the reward is so worth it. If you show God that you are following what he's telling you to do, I guarantee you your life will change. You just got to trust the process. Understand that it's not instant gratification. It's not going to be right now. But later when you're going to realize God's going to bless you in a way that you could not see because of one little thing you did two years ago. You gotta be patient and wait for it out. It's not gonna happen yet. And sometimes it does. Sometimes God does have his ways. You could do something today and tomorrow, you're like, oh shoot, I got a hundred dollars out of nowhere. We don't know how he works, right? But we know how we're supposed to work. Do your job, let him do his. Invest in yourself, self-education. That's what y'all doing right now. Congratulations, thank you. <laughs> you are actually took the $25 investment and came in his reign because you want to better you. We have lived for paying $150 to sit at VIP, another $350 popping bottles. Then we got to pay for the outfit. Then we got to pay for the gas to get there. Sometimes we got to spend a night and go to a hotel. And we do all that. We get home we're in the same predicament we was before we left the house. Now we about $500 less in the hole. And what did you get out of that night? I had an argument with my girl. This guy tried to talk to me. And I told him he was looking at the girl over there. And they did. That's what you bring home. But for $25, you know, now being aware and awakened. Good trade-off, isn't it? Good trade-off, right? Do not take it. 
Do not take it personal. It's not about you. Don't take things personal. When people come to you and they are nasty and they got an attitude, it's because they don't like themselves. Got nothing to do with you. When a person comes to you and they like whatever or you know whatever little smart little comment you want to be like, listen, let me tell you something. I, I'm sorry. I see that you don't really like yourself. Because if you like yourself, you wouldn't do that. I'm gonna pray for you and God. God bless you. I'm sorry. Respond that way and see them looking at you like you're crazy. They need two to tangle. You can't tangle with one person. A person's going to want to tangle with you. So they're going to do something to get on your skin because they want to aggravate you because they are mad at life and they need somebody to get it out with. And so they're going to aggravate you so you get mad at them so they can get out what they have going on. Nothing to do with you. Not one thing. Because if somebody knows who they are, they don't have no time to worry about you. If you're being pushed out of your job, situations, relationships, you are fighting to stay because you're fear of the unknown. Let God do his job. I'm sick there for a second. I got fired, so now I'm going to jump out the window and kill myself. What happened in 2008, y'all? How many people jumped out of the Wall Street building? Because they put their value in their jobs, not who they are. Nobody gonna like me because I don't have no money no more. They should like you without money. You should like yourself without money. I don't care if they like you or without no money. Those situations are good, ladies and gentlemen. People always think getting fired is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Being laid off is a great thing, y'all, because God has another plan for you. You just don't see it, you don't trust it, so therefore you're scared. If He's the source of all. Your job, he's letting them give you a source. You didn't do that. God gave you that source for that temporary time. Now he says it's time for you to move on to the next assignment. There's somebody at this job I want you to get close with. There's somebody at this job I need you to work on. So I have something that I know that you don't get it, but I'm telling you, I need you out of here. Okay, you're going to take your time, I'm going to get you laid off. Because you're taking too long. I told you to come on out of here. And y'all know good and well that you hear these signs. And you're thinking about, well, I got bills. I got kids. God said, well, I'm going to do more than what you're doing now. You just let me do it. All right, we'll sit there. Go ahead. Struggle. Relationships. Ladies, oh gosh. <sighs> Ladies. If a guy is you're dating, or you, I'm sorry to say, you married to, is not supportive, not feeling you, you're starving, reevaluate this relationship, ladies and gentlemen. Evaluate. Life is supposed to be grand. You're not supposed to struggle. If God is telling you it's time for you to go, trust him. I guarantee you he got something better for you. Trust the process. Friendships. How do you determine a friendship? Think about it. How do you determine a friendship? What is your credentials? What is your, your syllabus of friendship? Like, what is it? What do you use? What matrix do you use to say this person is your friend or not? <laughs> Communication. Somebody said loyalty. I'm going to talk on that in a second. Okay. Hold on. Hold on to that thought. Oh, gosh. I got to sit down again. The difference between conditional and unconditional love. What are your sore hours? You want me to explain that to y'all? Okay. When you're at work, you work eight to five. Most people give all they got between 8 to 5 while they're at work, right? So what happens at 501? What happens at 505? <laughs> Let's say it's Christmas Eve. 
and your phone, your boss is calling you on Christmas Eve, what we doing? You got the point, right? Okay. So unconditional love. When you love someone unconditional, it's outside your store hours, meaning that you're not expecting nothing in return. You're doing it because you love them. It's inconvenient for you to love. You don't want to go get someone in the middle of the night, but you do it because you love them. You get no benefit out of this at all. When someone is, is going through it and you're on the phone with them and got to go to work in two hours, right? That's called unconditional love. A lot of times we get, we get caught up because we love people inside of the conditional love. And we don't realize it's not unconditional until we need them to do something. And then we complain that they're not there for me. I call them, they never there, they make excuses, do all that. But when it's convenient for them, they give you 125,000%. And we think that means they love us. They love us in condition, not unconditional. We get into relationships with people because we see they love me. Ask them to do something outside of that. We don't give people enough chance to show their unconditional love. We just go into the condition and think that's what it is. And when you really get to learn the person, you see that they're not coming out outside their store out. At 501, they shut down on you. I've seen this over and over again because I'm, 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 I'm one of those. I love them guys in condition because they show me they love me. If you ask Bill Gates to give you $1,000, is that a lot? There you go. It's like a, it's like a penny, right? Oh, he gave me $1,000, man. Da, da, da. He just wanted you to get out of his office. He was tired of you. He said, here you go, $1,000. That's like him throwing a penny at you and said, get out of my office. But we take that as, oh my gosh, he did so much. He did nothing. Now you ask me for $1,000, that's unconditional love. <laughs> so be careful and just pay attention. And I want y'all to tell me though, I want you to just evaluate certain people and then tell them, you know what, you know, that made sense. I didn't realize that until, let me know, because I'm telling you, I was woken up. Awakening, ding, 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 ding. I was woken up when I did that one day and I said, Oh, wow. So you can't do, oh, okay. No problem, we good. I just need to know where to put you. That's all, we good, don't worry about it. Allowing people to live in your mansion when they don't deserve to stand in your hallway. <laughs> it's called boundary. Stop letting people be in your space when they don't deserve it. You have the right to say, you know what, we good, we Gucci, but nah, dude. Nah, dude. Boundaries. We allow people in our personal spaces when they don't deserve it. Just because the person walks in a human, they breathe, they don't deserve to be in your space. And when you don't do it, you allow people to do what you allow them to do to you. It's not their fault. Cause we the first ones. He's crazy. She's this. She no. She's nothing. She's being who she is. You allowed it in. You can't change her. You either going to accept her the way she is or you're going to take her as she is. But regardless of what it is, it's your decision. Nobody else's. You cannot make no one do anything outside of you. You can control only you. So this boundaries. Step out your comfort zone. Step out. If you haven't eaten by yourself yet, go to dinner, dress up, and go out by yourself to eat at dinner. Do it. Do it. Dress up. You could date yourself. Dress up and go to dinner and treat yourself to a nice root crisp, go to rallies, get a hotel, spend a night, have a good night with yourself. You can't, look, you can't have nobody, you treat, nobody is going to be able to treat you away unless you know how to treat yourself. And if you don't know that, he's going to be able to do anything to you because you don't even know for yourself what you like. Go do something for yourself. Travel. Oh, God. Travel. I ain't said go to Raleigh. That's not traveling. <laughs> travel. If you're uncomfortable with traveling, there's so many travel groups out there. There's a lot of travel groups out there that you could pick anywhere in the world you want to go, pay your money, and you're with a group of people that you secure. They do the, the, the touring with you and everything. You don't have to wait for your girls to go on a trip. 
They hold us back every time. How many people didn't go on somebody's trip because they was waiting for some girlfriends and they decided to change their mind on you in the last minute? <laughs> but guess what? That travel was for you. It wasn't for them. That wasn't for them. That experience that you missed out on was for a life-changing experience that now you don't have. There's world outside of the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. There's beauty outside of this, this place that we've been taught that's the best thing in the world. There's other places even better. And it makes you open your mind to different ideas and different things. Please travel. It changes your life. I guarantee you that. We are not giving out awards for service, for years of service. Loyalty, who said that? All right, sit down for you too. Loyalty. Years doesn't make loyalty. Just because you have a friend for 40 years, don't get me wrong, this one, she paid her, we, we 42 years in the game. You see she here doing this, right? She drove in this rain, right? From Virginia to be here to do this for me and brought me a gift. That's a best friend. She ain't expected nothing back from me. And if I tried, she wouldn't, she wouldn't take it. Loyalty is not just years. You know how we go, oh yeah, we were friends since the fourth grade. And, but like you said, things change when you get older. You've got to reevaluate your relationships with people. Don't, re don't put the year on it and think that that's it. No. If they're not going your direction or they're not benefiting your life, you got to say, you know what, I got to place you somewhere else. But you're good with Gucci. But I can't talk to you every day. I'm not hanging out with you. There's people that are in my family, like, you want to go out? No. Because I don't know there's a cop with me involved at the end of the night. No. You have to say no to your own family sometimes. You can't just take stuff in just because they're loyal, they're your cousin, or they're your brother, or they sister, or I knew them since the second grade. But if they're trifling or doing things you're not doing in, in grace of God, in the, it, you got to tell them, you know what? Ain't rude. Don't be rude. Just say, nah, it's all right, bro. You got it. Go out. You know, have a good time. I don't have no money to waste to get out of a jail. I don't have no money to waste because you going and you saying, I'm not paying for that. So let's just evolve. Let's just don't even get into it. No, I'm not going. So be careful because you as friends with someone doesn't mean just because they have years behind them that they deserve your space. Who's driving your car? Is it your trauma, your fears, or your insecurities? Who's driving your car? <laughs> Who is driving your car, lady? Who's steering your life? Have you ever thought about it like that? Who's steering your life? Is it you or is it these, these people right here in the car with you? You gotta, you gotta really think about that. Organization, what's loading you down? Your house, your pocketbook, and your car. There's no way you could tell me that you could be clarity and be clear when you have a junky house, junky car, and a junky pocketbook. How are you, how are you thinking clear? How are you thinking clear? You think that all that, that, that don't count? And all of a sudden you're over here like, I'm clear. I can't see the bottom of your pocketbook. Hit dog holler, hit dog holler. <laughs> but you have to pay attention to that. You clear what they said, cleanness is godliness, right? That's a purpose for that. That's the reason why he says that. He needs you to be in the best shape as possible. And to do that, you have a clear mind, you gotta have clarity. You can't have that when you go home and you sit in a bunch of mess. Your mind doesn't separate from your body, y'all. What your mind, your eyes see, it reflects back in and it does what it do. You can't detach that. Now your complacency and your procrastination. And your laziness is what God, what the devil wants. He wants you to sit in that mess because he don't want you to think past that mess. Because he has plans for you to not live in your purpose. Everyone can't take the journey with you. You have to be prepared to let them go. It, who said that? It is because we feel like, yo, we got to keep it real. We got to ride or die. We got to keep it real. Yo, you remember back in fifth grade when that girl tried to beat you up and I, I jumped in? Remember that? 
I jumped in, I helped you out. So it's 40 years later. Why are you holding me to this fight in the fifth grade? But that's what people do because they, don't, they haven't moved on. They still stuck. And they want you to stay there with them. And they want to do the guilt trip on you and say, well, remember back in 85, I gave you $100? But I paid you back. Don't let people make you feel guilty. Don't do that. You have to let people go. The best way of saying it is when you have an elevator, right? Everybody's on it on the first floor. You have your parents, your friends, your, your cousins, them. You have your people from school. You have all these people, right? And you start working yourself and elevating up in this elevator. Each floor, somebody got to get off. If they're not doing their work, if they're not trying to advance and they're trying to be better, they got to start getting off these floors. Because as you get it to the top, you should not have a bunch of people in the elevator with you. Unless they're doing their work. In most cases, people are not. Because like Yolanda said, this place should be back, all the way back there full of chairs. Y'all see the purpose. Y'all see, you, you got it. Y'all got the assignment. A lot of people don't. So therefore, they have to start getting off the floor. Get them off. Because when you get up here, they're going to hold you down. That weight is going to hold you down. And they're going to make you feel guilty. Because that's their mechanism. It's just something they do. It's ego. They let them, that mechanism kicks in because they're scared. People do stuff like that when they're scared. Their mechanism just snaps into being scared. So they got to, oh, you think you're all that? Oh, you. It's them trying to do something to keep you there. Because they're scared to move on and they want you to stay with them because they're scared. Sorry, I got to go. And if maybe you leave, they may look at themselves and start seeing that they need to do something. As long as we stay, they don't look at themselves. They look at you. But when you leave, the mirror has to turn. There's nobody there but them. You got to force that sometime with people. You got to let that mirror turn. Do you need approval? Did you get approval when you were born? Did somebody ask you you could be born? Did somebody say, Skinny, can, can you be born? Can, I, can you come out? You had no control over that, right? All right. You, you shouldn't have to get approval from people for nothing. Absolutely nothing. Why you need to ask someone to do anything? They ain't coming in here with you. They ain't coming out here with you. They ain't leaving with you. Do what's right for you. If you're not ready to do the work, I mean, if you're ready to do the work, you must be ready to change. We always want to change, but when change comes, we get scared because it happens. We don't know what to do. We're scared about change. You got to be ready. If you ask for it, you got to be ready to receive it. You got to be ready to change. You're, you're not going to be everyone cup of tea. I, that was one of my people pleasers. Anybody else? Who else the people pleaser in here? Isn't that hard? Isn't that hard? Because you want everybody to like you. So you want to do everything you can to make someone like you. You even get on their nerves so much because you want to call them. What's wrong? Is everything okay? Da, 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 da. Oh my gosh. That's what people please us do. Because we have a track record we got to keep. We got, we got a list in our head that everyone likes us. And when this one person sticks out, we got to make sure to get on the side of the list. You got to like me. How you don't like me? Some people don't like you just because you're great. And even you don't know you're great. They know you're great. Most people know you're great before you know you're great. Because they see it off of you. And they get intimidated by you. Oh my gosh. That's rain, y'all. <laughs> so you have to definitely, definitely be ready for change. And then on top of that for your um, cup of tea. You're not ready. Oh, okay, excuse me. Oh, I forgot the Jay-Z one. Are people putting their fears on you? Jay-Z said a quote. His uncle told him, you can't do that. He said, no, 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 you can't do that. I can. They do that to protect you. A lot of older people, and even some people who are scared, they use that as protection. They want to protect you from getting hurt because they don't have the, in them the willpower to do it. And they said, I know how it feels to be hurt because I tried it, it didn't work. I, just, I couldn't do it. I don't want that to happen to you. That's not the case. You have to do what's right for you. What you, what you can do and what that person can do is two different things. You cannot compare people. We do that too. 
Your, your purpose and my purpose are two different purposes. I know how to do certain things well. You know how to do certain things well. You know how to do certain things well. We all got gifts. We are not meant to compare to each other. And that's where we go wrong. Because if this person could do it, I should be able to do it too, because they could do it. That's not true. That's not true at all. You are ready. Are you ready for your test to be your testimony? What God does is he gives you these values and he gives you these tests and you grow in these tests and then you do what I'm doing right now. This is the test that I had to go through when I had my breakdown, when I did my work, when I went to life coaching, when I went to therapy, when I did all of this, it led me to sitting right here in front of y'all today. This is what God wants you to do. And his way, not telling you to be a motivational speaker, but God wanna use everybody in this room and you're stopping it. You're stopping his process because y'all scared. Don't get me wrong. I have not have a, I had not have a W-2 in two years. Let me repeat that. I have not had a W-2 in two years. I'm not worried. He told me he got me and I trust him. Things come in unexpected, unexpected pleasant surprises. You're not going to know everything, y'all. You've got to trust it. He's not going to leave you. When you give and surrender your life and give it to him, he will not leave you. Now, don't get me wrong. There's valleys in life. But he's going to take you through those. He is. I promise you that. And it's not going to be in the way you want it to be. That's called surrendering. When it's not in what you want, it's what he wants. But I'm still here. I took a chance. Me and Coach Jay said, you know what, let's do this. I didn't go, oh, I don't know if people gonna come. I don't know. I said, look, people who are supposed to be here are gonna be here. If it's two, I'm gonna give you the same energy if it was 25,000. Because God's content doesn't change. The people that only should not matter. The content doesn't change, so it's the same thing. So why is it less successful if it's only two people, if it's 2,000? It's the same content. He said, do my job. I didn't ask you to worry about the audience. That's what, y'all, anybody see Tyler Perry, Maxine? You saw what happened in his first show? He spent all that money and not one person came to his opening. Not one. And he was mad. He said, God, you told me to do this. He wanted to see if he trusted him. And that next show, how many people he had? It was around the corner. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't get him in fast enough. Because that's what God does. He, 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 he tries to see we trust him. And he used these little tests. Are you going to pass or are you going to fail? That's up to y'all. I want to pass my test. So I'm here today because this is what he told me to do. And he told me to do it for y'all because he knew who was coming. I didn't. Y'all were supposed to be here. So the key takeaways today is you are worthy, you're amazing, you're strong, and you are enough, ladies. You are enough. Stop letting people tell you otherwise. You are enough. If I could sit up here and do this, y'all, I was working at UPS for 20 years in sales. I didn't go to school for this. I got a master's degree in organizational leadership. Yes, I'm a professional organizer. Yes, I have a degree in that. This is, this is God. I got out, out my own way and listened to what he told me to do, and this is what he told me to do. If you want to follow me, I have a podcast and talk show called Let's Talk 1943. It's actually on February 14th. It will be three years since I've been doing my podcast. I, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I use the same, same concept about my show. I don't look at numbers, not the quantity, but the quality. Whoever was watching that show that day, it's for them, and that my job is done. God's going to tell me when it's time for me to elevate to another level when it comes to that. I have lessons to still learn, and I understand and I trust the process, and I know what that is. So I don't question him. I know that he's doing his job. If you're interested in purchasing any of my books, I actually have now seven books on Amazon. 
So if you are interested in purchasing any of my books, um, the one on top is Stay Woke. I actually made that for this day. When I was working on this, I wrote a book at the same time. I was working on this PowerPoint. <laughs> so if you're interested, please um, go to Amazon and you can look under Regina R. Smithwick and you'll see all my books under there. So before I close out today, I just wanna ask everyone a question. Are you ready to change? Yes. Are you really ready to put the effort in to change? Change by Walter. I, this song really resonates and I wanted to Roxy to kind of do her little thing here, this song, if y'all don't mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You trust me a lot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mom passed away April 1st last year, and this is a song that we had at the end, and it wouldn't be right if I don't do this. Mommy, thank you. Thank you for everything, Mommy. Yeah. And I want to thank everyone here for coming out and coming out for Coach J, coming out for Roxy, coming out for the poet. I appreciate you. I don't take none of y'all for granted, because y'all don't have to be here. And I thank y'all for coming out. And I hope you enjoyed yourself today. Thank you. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. Oh, first you're coming to say your thank you. Thank you. I love you too. Love
Thank you.